start. So first thing we're going to do, all right, let's get up onto our onto our feet. We're going to start with our beanie game. All right. Now, for those that haven't done the beanie game, it is very, very simple. All right, there are different types of bean. We're going to get into different types of shapes relating to those beans. All right, so we've got broad bean, which is actually like this, but we're actually going to do it as star jumps. All right, so broad bean is star jumps. We've got running bean. We've got jumping bean. We've got baked bean, which is where you've got to get into a curled up position. All right on your hips like this. We've got baked beans on toast, which is just left flat on the floor, arms spread out. Uh, we also have jelly bean, all right, jelly bean is just like this, so you go all jelly-like with the arms and, the, uh, on your, arms and your legs. Uh, we also have chili bean, where you've got to be like this, all chili. <laughs> and then we've also got a new one today, we've got balanced bean, not balanced bean, but balanced bean, where you've got to stand on one leg and hold that position. All right, so I'm going to, I'm going to uh, shout out the different bean exercises, and then you guys have got to uh, get into that position as quick as you can. All right, so let's start off with running bean. All right, time to get those heart rates up. Okay. Let's go into broad bean. Good, make sure your hands are touching at the top. Okay, jumping bean. All right, you guys carry on. I'm just gonna move my laptop so it's a little further back so you can see. Okay, so we should all be on jumping bean. Okay, jelly bean. Make your parents wonder what you're doing. Okay, back into running bean. Baked beans on toast. Baked beans on toast. We'll go baked beans on toast, lie on your back. And then into baked bean, sit it up. And then baked beans on toast again. Use your core, baked beans. And then again, baked beans on toast. And one more baked bean. Good, right, back up on your feet. Running bean. Okay, balance bean on one leg. Hold it. Come on, let's see some really good balancing. Oh, we've got a few people hopping around already. Okay, change legs, balance on the other leg. Good, back into broad bean. Good, make sure you reach all the way to the top. Okay, running bean again. Okay, a little bit faster. We're into a marathon, so we're on a marathon. We're like Mo Farah now. And then a little bit faster. All right, let's go into our Usain Bolt bean as fast as you can. Come on, get those legs and arms going. 100 meters as fast as you can, even quicker. Go, jumping bean. Yeah, let's make it a jelly bean. Okay, last few, let's go. Jumping bean again, but with a twist. All right, get in there, getting them hips moving. Just having a little dance. Yeah, we could have dancing bean as well, couldn't we? Come on, show us your best dance moves. Show us your best dance moves. Let's have a look who's got the best dance moves. Nice. Back into jumping bean. Okay, last few baked beans. Then baked beans on toast. Baked beans again. Baked beans on toast. Baked beans. 
One more, big knees on toast. Use your core and into a sitting up position. Very good. Right, excellent. So, what we're going to do now, something a little bit, well, not massively different, but slightly different for our mobility. So, in the next day or so, I'm going to be putting a new video out, and you guys are going to have the opportunity to do the exercises before anybody else. All right? So, what we're going to do is it's a mobility routine, so things that we normally do on our Tuesday and our Thursday warm ups, but what we're going to do is use them to check to see how tight and how mobile the different areas of our body are. So, we're going to go through all the different parts of our body and we're going to use these exercises to see if we're tight. And if we're feeling quite tight on them, then you know that you have to spend a little bit more time not in the session now, but after the session or tomorrow or during the week, stretching and mobilizing those areas, okay? So we're gonna start off. The first one, or the first self-check, we call all of these self-checks because you are checking your body. The first one, we're going to check to see how tight our lats are. So the lats are the muscle down the side of our back here that goes all the way up into our armpits. So what we're gonna do is lie, I'll do it this way, to start, we're going to lie flat on our backs. You're going to put your hands back to back like this. And then all you're going to do is stretch over the top of your, over the top of your head and then see how far you can get down. See if you can get all the way to the floor. Now, a lot of people won't be able to get all the way to the floor because they've got tight, tight lats here. You've got to make sure that your little fingers stay together and the back of your hands stay together. If you come apart, it's a lot easier to do. All right, so everything has got to be nice and tight. So let's go in total 10 of these. And let's just see how tight we are. And then back up. So you can use these not just as a self-check, you can use these as part of your mobility routine. Hopefully you've all checked out the new mobility routine that we've got on our YouTube channel, the one that Dan has done. All right, if you're not managing to get all the way to the floor, it means that you've got tight lats. You need to work on stretching them out, mobilizing them. If they are tight, then check out the YouTube video that we've got and have a look, see which areas can help stretch through your lats. If you do that every day, you'll soon see an improvement. Okay, then that's pretty much 10. Okay, so hopefully they weren't too tight. If they were, like I said, you've got to work on that area. So the next one is called the sleeper stretch. So what you're gonna do is lie on your side. You're going to bring out your elbow in line with your shoulder so that you've got a 90 degree angle on your forearm your arm here and all you're going to do so lean on your side you're going to bring your arm all the way back to the floor and then you're going to stretch or you're going to bring it all the way forwards as far as you can and then back again and the idea is now we're checking to see how tight our shoulders are and whether we've got a good enough range of motion throughout our arm shoulders all right, so we're gonna go 10 on each side again. All right, so just rotating through, seeing if you can get a little bit further each time. All right, now you might not be able to bring your arm all the way to the floor, don't worry, that's fine. All right, I can only go this far, I can't even get my arm close to the floor. All right. Let's just see how far you can go. Once you've done 10 on one side, let's change it over. Let's go 10 on the other side. Now again, if you're finding that your arm is quite tight or even worse, if you find that there's any soreness when you do this, then you need to really work hard on mobilizing your shoulders. If you do have soreness, you need to be very careful Okay, again, let's go 10 all together. I'm just going from one side to the other. Very similar to 
the internal external rotation one that we do lead flat on our backs big difference on this is that we'll lead on our side and you can as well bring your arm forwards and then just put your top hand on the bottom hand and just press it down a little further to increase that range of movement okay i think that's pretty much 10. right the next one all right so the next one is really good to see well fed well for helping you with your streamline all right it's to show how mobile our shoulders are but also the top of our back as well all right now I haven't got much space, but I'll see if I can do it. Leg down. Oh, you can't really see from there. So I'm going I'm to bend my legs. Now, if you can keep your legs straight when you do this, all right, I'm only bending them so that you can see. All right, now you're going to put your arms out into a streamlined position. All right, and you're going to start with your head down, hands on top of each other, and then you're going to start by lifting your shoulders up and then your hands up and then lower back down. So you lift your shoulders up, then your hands, hold it for a few seconds, and then back down. And the idea is we're tested to see how high you can elevate your arms. All right, now this is a really good test. It really helps you with your streamlined positions. If you can't lift your hands up at all, you really need to work on mobilizing your shoulders and the top of your back. If you can, then fantastic. All right, I know a few swimmers that are able to get their arms quite high, all right, and they are really good at getting into a streamlined position. If you struggle to do this, this might be one of the reasons why you struggle to get into a streamlined position as well. So let's go five in total, all right, on me. Are we ready? One. And down. Start with your shoulders. Two. And down, three, and down, four, and down, and five, and down. Cool, good. Now I certainly need to work a few more of those, all right, but uh, I'll do that in my own time. So next one is a rotation one. So this time you need to be sat up on your mat. You can either have your legs crossed or you can have them straight out in front of you. As long as your back is straight, your shoulders are back, you've got to be nice and tall when you start this. So what you're going to do is bring your arms out in front of you. All right, you can put them, point them in a gun position or you can just have them flat like that. All right, and all you're going to do is rotate from one side and you're going to see how far you can get round following your hands, but keeping your back straight. It's dead easy to rotate and, and twist your back. You've got to keep it straight all the way through. And imagine you're on a clock, all right? So you're starting at 12. Let's see how far round the clock you can go before you have to stop because of your mobility. So I'm at about a two there. And then you're going to come back to the center and go around the other side. Again, I'm at about a 10, so I'm pretty much equal on both sides there. All right, so let's do a few of these, okay? So we'll go three all together, rotating from one side to the other. So that's one. Always stop in the middle to reset. Two. And three. Good. Now, if you can get further than 10 and two, I'll be impressed. All right. The goal is to try and get all the way through to three and nine on a clock. All right. So, again, if you're feeling quite tight, then you need to work on your rotation. If you're feeling that you get further on one side to the other, then you need to work on that rotation in uh, one direction. So next one is going to be our hamstrings. All right, now we've done this plenty of times. You're going to be laid flat on your back. All right, you're going to lift one leg up and hold behind your thigh, so not on your knee, but just underneath under your knee. And all you're going to do is point your toes up to the ceiling. 
and then extend your leg and you'll feel the stretch in your hamstring here and then hinge back down. All right, now a good goal on this would be to try and get your leg completely straight. As you can see, I'm quite tight. I definitely need to work on my mobility. I've been doing a lot of running. I a 13K run on the weekends. That's why I'm probably feeling quite tight in my legs. So I know that I've got to work on increasing that range of motion. All right, again, we're going to go 10 of these on each leg. I'm up to about six. And one more. Okay, change legs if you've not already. You might feel tighter on one leg compared to the other. Make sure your toes are always pointing up when you start off. All right, so flex your foot. One more. Fantastic. And the last self check. This is one we do quite regularly, is going to be our hip flexors. All right, so you're going to start in a lunge position at a 90 degree angle. So you should have a nice straight line here. This leg should be at 90 degrees. Bring your back foot so you're on your toe like this. All right, so flex it again. And it's important you keep your back straight when you do this. You're just going to pulse forwards, keeping your back straight. Feel if it's tight, if it's feeling tight. Again, you need to work on your mobility in this area. Okay, so let's just go five slow pulses on each side. Again, if you're joining us for the first time, we always start with a good warm up, start with our raise, our heart raise, and then we do our mobility. And then if we've got time, we'll do some activation and priming work. Okay, change legs if you've not already. You should be feeling it at the top of your leg. So where your hip and your leg meet, that's where you'll feel it if you're doing this correctly. If you're not feeling it, it might be because you're leaning forwards too much. You need to just push your hips forwards, but lean backwards slightly. Or it might be that you need to raise your back foot a bit more to be able to feel it. Notice some of you bending forwards when you're doing this. Keep your back straight. You shouldn't be leaning forwards. You've got to keep that straight back all the way through the movement. Good. Right, so we've used them as our mobility. We're also going to use those exercises to check. And I would suggest that you check at the start of each week. All right, so maybe on your first session uh, on a Monday, perhaps just check, go through those self checks and see which areas you need to work on through the week. All right, and it's a good indication then of what you can focus on. Right, so hopefully. We've all got our balls, our tennis balls, or apples, or oranges, or ping pong balls, or whatever they are, all right? And we're going to do some balance work. Today's session is on balance, and then we're going to do some fun animal movements towards the end, all right? So, are we, are we ready? Okay, so, I want us all stood up. And to start with, we're just going to balance on one leg. Dead simple, all right, like we did in the warm up. All right, and I want you to just hold it there. Let's see if we can hold that balance. All right, arms out to the side, arms out in front, arms in streamline. Good, and then let's extend forwards. Like we did the other day, holding that balance, extend that back leg, oh, hold that balance, 
and then back up again. All right, we did this the other day. All right, and leg down. Okay, if you didn't see that, you weren't sure, let's watch again from the side. All right, so left leg up. All right, let's keep it at 90 degrees. Arms out to the side. Arms out in front. Arms up into streamline. And then extend. So you're going backwards with your leg. And then you're going forwards into streamline. Let's see if you can create a nice flat back, a nice long body line as you do it. All right, good. Right, good. Let's stand on one leg again. Okay, this is where the tennis ball comes in now. So what you're going to do, all right, we're going to do a bit of balance and coordination at the same time. All right, you're going to drop the tennis ball at one side of your leg, and then using the same arm, you then have to try and catch it underneath your leg. All right, so let's see if I can do it. I did it before. Let's see if I can do it now. All right, so you're going to drop it, whoop, and then not like that, you've got to catch it. Let's try it again. All right, so stand on one leg, you've got to drop it, and then you've got to catch it. There you go, and stay balanced at the same time. All right, so drop it, and then catch it. All right, so let's go a few of these. All right. I'm gonna go one leg to start, so stay on the same leg. All right, let's keep going until you've done five catches. Once you've done five on one leg, then change legs and go five on the other. A little bit harder, you've got to do it this time with your other hand, all right? So if you've done it with your right hand, then you've now got to do it with your left hand. I've got a message come through. Can it? Can it balance on the floor? Can what balance on the floor? Okay, I'm not sure what you mean by balance on the floor, but you've, you've got to be balanced on the floor. Okay, so. Can it bounce on the floor? No. The idea is that it has got to be, you've got to catch it before it bounces. All right, so you drop it on the inside and then you've got to catch it before it bounces. So you've got to be really quick. All right. Like that. So you drop it and then catch it. So it's just a good balance, coordination one. All right, once you've done five, then we can go back to the other leg. Five again. All right, maybe you want to experiment and go the opposite hands across. So you drop it. So imagine you've got your right leg up, but you're dropping it and catching it now with your left hand. All right, a little bit harder. You've got further to reach. Oh, I'm not doing very well today. Okay. And then again, do it with the opposite. So you go left leg up, but then you're doing it with your right arm. Go on, let's have a, a quick look at everybody. Let's see how everyone's getting on. <laughs> You've got to be quick. Got to be quick at it. Nice. <laughs> but just really good coordination. Remember, you've got to drop it. You're not throwing it under your leg. You're just dropping it, and then you've got to catch it with the same arm. All right, so those that are throwing it under the leg, you're not doing it like that. You've just got to drop it and then catch it 
You've got to be really quick with your arms. All right, interesting. We've got lots of different, uh, lots of different styles there going on. Very good. All right, excellent. So we're going to move on. All right, next part of your session is going to be, well, it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to be doing some animal type movements. Now, some of you might have done these before, but it's called animal flow or animal, animal, uh, animal walks or animal movements. All right, and we're going to start with a bit of an introduction to it. All right, so it's not going to be too difficult, I hope, but you do need a little bit of floor space. All right, now these are great, again, not just for agility, balance, and coordination, but helping you move in different ways, which particularly when you're swimming, we move in lots of different ways. It's important that you have that ability to do it. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to walk like a chicken. All right, now, I don't have much floor space. If you have a little bit further, all right, you could go perhaps two lengths of the mat, all right, if you're like me, and you've only got a little bit, then you're gonna go just one length of the mat. So the first one we're gonna do, just watch to start with, and then you can give it a go, all right? So you're gonna start off in a crouched position, all right, and you're going to put your hands behind your head, and all you're gonna do is walk like a chicken. Okay, dead simple. Ooh. From one side of your mat, across to the other side of your mat. All right, so again, if you've got a little bit more space, then, uh, then you can go without, uh, go a bit further. I'm gonna move the mat out of the way, might be a bit easier. All right, so from one side to the other. Try and keep your balance. All right, important that you keep your head up when you're doing it. Don't look down, keep your shoulders back. Once you get from one side, turn around and go again. All right, so nice crouch position. Hands on the back of your head and you're just going from one to the other. <laughs> I've got comments here. Let me just have a quick look at what someone said. Uh, bounce again. Okay. Right, keep going. I want to see everyone doing it another two times. Oh, it's harder than you harder than it looks. Oh. <laughs> nice. That's very good. From Amber there. Excellent. Try and stay low to the floor, and obviously you're using your hands, sorry, you're using your legs, you're not using your hands. Excellent. Right, the next one. So, similar sort of position. This time, is gonna be a kangaroo jump. All right, so the difference this time is that instead of walking like a chicken, you're going to jump like a kangaroo. All right, so hands behind your head again. All right, and from there, you're going to jump like a kangaroo forwards and then turn around and go the opposite way. Oh. Now, if it's hurting your knees, don't go as deep. All right, just perhaps sit a little bit higher. All right, if you're feeling okay, then stay down and it's just forwards. And then, if anyone is good enough, let's see if you can do it. Backwards. Oh. <laughs> right, you guys carry on. Again, if you're feeling it in your knees, don't go as deep. Go up a little bit higher, make it more of a squat position. All right, don't want any sore knees when you're doing this. <laughs> Excellent, very good. Some good ones there, Ivy, very nice. But again, keep your back straight, heads up. Okay, fantastic, right. Next one, so the next one is going to be a gorilla walk. All right, now again, you might need a little bit more space on this one, all right, but let's see how I get on. So gorilla walk, this time, instead of starting out in a crouch position, you're going to start out 
in this position, and you're going to put your fists on the floor. All right, similar in a way to a downward dog position, those that have done yoga or Pilates, and you're going to put your weight on your hands, and you're going to move opposite leg, opposite foot. All right, so you've got to be a little bit like a gorilla, moving opposite hand and opposite foot, leaning your weight forwards, all right? Now, when you do this, it has got to be smooth and it's got to be graceful. I don't want to see really fast movements. They've got to be really slow, smooth, graceful movements, okay? So let's have a look. I want to see you guys doing it. So make a, a, a fist with your hands, all right, and you're doing it on your fists. All right, resting your weight on your arms. So those that are doing it with their legs, you need to lean forwards and rest a little bit more weight on your hands, on your arms. All right, slow movements again. You're moving opposite leg and then opposite hands. All right, let's have a look. I told you today was going to be a little bit different. Excellent. Very nice. Right, wonderful. So, next one. Similar sort of thing. This time, instead of walking in our fists, we're going to walk on our forearms like a leopard, all right? So from there, you're going to go down and you're going to walk on your forearms with your backside up in the air. And all you're going to do is go opposite arm and opposite leg, all right? So you're walking on your forearms and on your feet. Again, I don't have much room to play with on this one, all right? So if you don't have much room, don't worry, just keep Resetting, starting again, just do a few movements forwards and then a few movements backwards. So you're on your forearms, moving opposite arm, opposite leg. This one is like a leopard walk. Okay, let's keep it going. Place your hands out in front of you as well. Let's have a look. Good, so let's keep it going. All right, I want to see a few movements, both directions. Try and stay off your knees, try and lift your knees off the floor as well. So you're on your forearms and your feet only. All right, you've got a bit more room, you can maybe go around in a circle. Uh, test, make sure you're on your forearms, not your hands. So those that are doing it on their hands, you need to go lower and go onto your forearms, try and keep the whole of your body. So it does involve some strength as well. You're working your core strength to keep your knees off the floor. Those that have got knees on the floor, make sure you're lifting them up. Okay, excellent, right. Next one. Sorry, next one again, a little bit different. All right, this time we're going to do a monkey sidestep. All right, so you're going to start off in a crouch position, and all you're going to do, you can use your hands to help you balance. You're just going to sidestep like a monkey from one side to the other. All right, dead simple from one side across to the other. All right. All right, off you go if you've not started already. This one is called a monkey sidestep. You can make the monkey noises as well. Confuse your parents, make them wonder why you're acting like a monkey. All right, let's have a look. 
And again, if you've got a mat, you can just go from one side of the mat across to the other. That's it, small graceful movements. Try and stay balanced. Good. Let's keep it going, a few more. Excellent. Okay, final one. So, final one is going to be frog hops, but we're going to do them in one position. All right, so starting off in this position here, all right, hands just touching the floor to help you balance, and all you're going to do is jump up and down. All right, simple as that. Again, if you're finding it quite tough on your knees, just come a little bit higher. All right, you don't need to do as much, just come up a little bit higher so there's less pressure. All right, if you can, do it down in this crouch position. All right, are we ready? Off we go. And then a big one. Oh, how high can you jump? And then back down. Let's do one more round of that. Okay, ready? Off you go. Quite tough on the legs, this one. And a big jump. Oh, off we go. And then stop. Excellent. Right. So, final bit. With this, we're going to do a little sequence. What I want you to do now is pick three of your favorite animal movements, and I want you to do a sequence where you go there and back on each of them. All right, if it's like the frog one where you're on the spot, then do 10 hops and then that's it. All right, so what I want to do, what I want to see is a sequence of your favorite ones. So you can either have the chicken walk. With your hands behind your head, you can do the kangaroo hops with the hands behind the head, gorilla walks, uh, leopard walks, side monkey hops, or you could do the frog hops in one place. So, your favorite sequence of three animal movements. Are we ready? Let's have a look. Okay, off you go. Good. You choose which ones you do. I'm having a watch. I'm sure your parents are going to be very confused as to what you're doing today, but it's good fun. It is hard if you do it correctly. All right, try and be graceful. Try and be smooth. Make the movements controlled. Good. I'm liking a few of the leopard ones. Make sure you're on your forearms, though. If you're doing a leopard, you're on your forearms, not your hands. Nice. Some good ones there. If you're bouncing, keep those heads up. <laughs> Excellent. Very good. If you've finished, then just sit down and I can see that everyone's finished. Fantastic. Right. So last part of our session, like we always do on a Tuesday, we're going to finish off with some ankle flexibility. All right. So today's ankle flexibility, we're going to start off. We've done quite a lot with the knees there. So we're just going to stretch them out so you can extend your legs. All right, I want you to sit up straight, and then all I want you to do is point your toes down to the floor. Let's see this way. So point your toe, toes down to the floor. See how close to the floor you can bring them. And we're going to hold it there for 10 seconds to start with. And then I want you to go the opposite way, flex them up, and go 10, holding it that way. Really flexing your feet as far as you can. Keep 
Okay, then let's go out to the side, like breaststroke. So one, two, just your ankles. Three, not your knees. Keep your knees pointing up. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, let's go point it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Then bring them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then out to the side. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, slow it down some of you, eight, nine, ten. You've got to make sure you feel the stretch on each one of those. If you're just doing that, you ain't feeling any stretch. You've got to really extend out, keep your knees pointing upwards, you're only turning your ankles out to the side. Okay? Right, next one. So let's go into our sitting position toes directly behind you all right now you can do this two ways you can either bring something under your feet so you raise your feet and your ankles up all right so you've got a foam roller or a pillow you can just raise your feet up and then sit back onto them if you don't have anything then you can just re raise your knees up and extend them like that all right whatever's most comfortable is Going to be a little bit painful you should feel the stretch in your ankles and if you're not then you're not getting anything out of it you will feel it but don't go so far that it hurts okay so we're just going to go 10 seconds at a time we'll do two of these and then we're done all right are we ready okay one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten Okay, just relax, maybe stretch out your feet a little bit. Okay, let's go again. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Good. Right, I want you guys to carry on doing some more ankle flexibility have a practice uh, at home you should be doing that every day anyway all right it will massively help your kick and improve your kick um question is do we need bands um i've stayed away from bands at the moment because i don't think everyone is going to have them um i will let you know when we start using them um but at the moment, if you've not got them, don't worry. If you do have them, I might find a few exercises that we can use with them. Okay. Right. Fantastic, guys. I will see you on Thursday. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.